Hi guys. As you can see, this is another glorious day here in the collapse of everything at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, good Lord, where I guess I and I hear 35 million other people in this country right now are under some sort of flood watch. Uh, <laughs> over 10% of the United States is under some degree of flood watch, flood warning. Good Lord, here we go again. And this is what a, I don't even think it's a category one hurricane looks like here. Uh, on Friday, August 9th, 2024, where uh, I have lost right about $300 uh, out of my pocket is what this uh, latest little uh, hiccup in the climate. You know, when, when they try to figure out the, the true cost of climate disasters, I guarantee you uh, all of the lost wages of vacation rental host uh, wages will not be factored in to the, all of the multi-billion dollar uh, climate catastrophes and uh, we're just entering hurricane season, no telling uh, how many more hundreds of dollars I'm going to lose. But I'm not sit here. I'm not here to. Uh, well, I guess that $300 ain't gonna happen. We will uh, keep our fingers crossed that the flood of 2024 ain't gonna happen. But since it is a Friday, and I've got nothing better to do uh, on this rainy day other than watch my money uh, float down the rain swollen creek we're going to do what i think is my favorite roundup of the week the ain't gonna happen roundup uh <laughs> which we do every friday the agh roundup and we're gonna start out with medium.com today and good guy guys uh i could uh I could pretty much do uh, a, a whole rant on this one. This is a, a nod from what I call the clueless moron bliss ninnies. The little greeny bliss ninnies <coughs> who uh, on this waterlog today are telling me that water is love. Water is love. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm sure uh, all of those people from from uh, Florida to New York uh, are really sharing the, uh, the feeling that water is love today. Okay, but this is by some clueless moron little greeny bliss ninny I have never heard of in my life and hopefully we'll never hear from again <clears throat> this little eco weenie named Douglas Rushkoff. Douglas Rushkoff writing in medium.com I am done with climate doom we can repair our biomes from the bottom up using water and love there you go well Douglas I've got all the water uh, you need uh, to pre repair our biomes I, 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 I'm gonna read this as far as I can before the rising vomit at the back of my throat makes me stop okay take it away Douglas <coughs> I have become something of a climate doomer over the past few years. Partly, that has come from listening to my smartest friends who have been studying energy, fossil fuels, timelines, 
the various plans for shifting to renewable energy, which ain't going to happen. And the geoengineering ain't going to happen fantasies of the tech titans. But, but, there is another way of looking at all of this. What if, what if the trajectory of global climate could be impacted instead by smaller actions? Could something like homeopathy or acupuncture work on a global level? Well, the answer to your question, Douglas, is no, it could not. Just how much influence can we have over the microbiomes in which we live and how does changing them change the larger organism of which we are a part? The answer, not at all. This is the kind of work the people at the Tamara Peace and Research and Education Center in Portugal have been doing. It is an intentional community and living laboratory for social, civic, economic, and climate experiments and an experiential school for those who want to learn from their findings in everything from land stewardship and raising children ah, to conflict resolution and rainwater management. Well, we could uh, manage some rainwater uh, in the Finger Lakes of New York about now, dude. Uh, they may have gotten best known for their open approach to relationships and love. For they have learned that the integrity and honesty with which we approach one another is a prerequisite for engaging sustainably on any other level. And the stuff they do actually works. Okay, I've had enough. The vomit is right at the back of my throat. So we're going to move on to the mainstream media from the New York Times a few days ago. Scientist defends an audacious plan to block sunlight and cool the earth. I remember uh, seeing this video of this uh, crazy a long-haired uh, old doomer sitting on a rock in the middle of a creek uh, in Austin, Texas about 14 years ago making the prediction that in the year 2020 you would be reading about solar radiation management in the New York Times that the New York Times would be cheering on solar radiation management as a way to save this planet and the vast majority of clueless morons reading the New York Times would be agreeing uh, that, uh, that it's a good way to save the planet. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we anybody uh, down on this rabbit hole has heard this a uh, hundred times before. Y y you know, what this is is a profile on this uh, mad scientist David Keith. David Keith, who is, uh, you know, probably the single biggest proponent of solar radiation management uh, to save the planet uh, and uh, and and of course David Keith is not alone and he is being uh, highlighted here in the New York Times uh, in the summer of 2024 there is a growing interest in efforts to intentionally alter 
the Earth's climate, a field known as geoengineering, already major corporations are operating enormous facilities to vacuum up the carbon dioxide that is heating up the atmosphere and bury it underground. Yes, some scientists are performing experiments to brighten clouds, another way to bounce some solar radiation back to space. Others are working on efforts to make oceans and plants absorb more carbon dioxide. But of all of these ideas, it is stratospheric solar engineering that elicits the greatest the greatest the greatest and the greatest fear. Proponents see it, you know, solar radiation management, what those uh, conspiracy wackos call chemtrails, as a relatively cheap and fast way to reduce temperatures well before the world has stopped burning fossil fuels. Harvard University has a solar geoengineering program, and get ready, uh, conspiracy wackos that has received grants from Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates, uh, the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, and the William and Flora Hewitt Foundation. It is being, you know, solar radiation management is being studied by the Environmental Defense Fund along with the World Climate Research Program an international scientific effort. The European Union last year called for a thorough analysis of the risks of geoengineering and said countries should discuss how to regulate an eventual deployment of the technology. Yes, but many scientists and environmentalists fear that it could result in unpredictable calamities. And then they go and, and so at least at least the New York Times is trying to uh, promote both sides of this. Uh, so you know for a very limited time I did this thing called Good News Monday where Newsweek magazine comes out with their good news stories about the planet uh, and uh, while I gave up on that on that Monday roundup after about three weeks I could not resist this good news story for planet Earth Scientists want to build an ark on the moon. And there you go. Take it away, Newsweek magazine, and bring us some ain't gonna happen. Scientists have suggested that saving life on Earth by keeping it on the moon is a modern space age Noah's Ark. The quote, lunar biorepository, uh huh, could store cryo preserved samples from the most endangered species on Earth to protect its, meaning our, biodiversity, according to a new paper in the journal Bioscience. The samples would be protected from Earth based issues ranging from natural disasters and climate change to geopolitical conflicts by virtue of being far away on the moon. This out of the world solution, solution to the, you know, the six mass extinction was proposed by researchers at the Smithsonian National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute suggesting that Earth's most at-risk species could be preserved 
long into the future and uh, it doesn't mention uh, where they're going to be you, you, you know brought back to life that little part not uh, talked about apparently alright from the moon to the rainforest of Peru uh, some of you may know uh, I have written a book which you can find uh, I think you can find it on Barnes and Noble called Peruvian Plunge when I spent uh, four months in 2009 uh, right near where they're talking about here in this story uh, you know about all of the planet eaters uh, destroying the Peruvian rainforest uh, in uh, good lord 15 years ago while the Peruvian government did absolutely nothing and in fact uh, is fully uh, paving the way for the planet eaters so what is the latest from AP out of Peru reclusive tribe attacks loggers suspected of encroaching on their land in Peru's Amazon Peru's reclusive Macho Piro ethnic group recently used bows and arrows to attack loggers suspected of encroaching on their territory in the Amazon. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, they didn't kill any of them. But anyway, uh, Peru's. I, I'm just going to. I'm. I'm just going to go to the bottom of the article. Peru's Ministry of Culture responsible for the protection of indigenous peoples did not respond to a message Monday seeking comment yes on the attack and their protection efforts survival international and advocacy group for the indigenous peoples which closely follows the Mashu Piro's issues say it is pressuring it is pressuring the Peruvian government to move deeper into these areas of the Amazon to help control the situation, said Teresa Mayo of Survival International. Quote, this is a permanent emergency. We have been seeing the Macho Piro every two weeks at different points and in all of them they are surrounded by loggers. It is truly a matter of life and death. And only, and only, the Peruvian government can and has the duty to stop it. Yes, uh, I am <laughs> quite sure I the Peruvian government in the year 2024 is about as interested as uh, protecting uh, Amazon Indians uh, as they were then anyway. Okay, we're going to go over to a newspaper called the Nevada Current. The Nevada Current titled The Giant Elephant in the Room Tax Tax that we must no longer ignore and they start off talking about Tropical Storm Debbie uh, you know all of the uh, this is their segue into the story uh, using Tropical Storm Debbie as, uh, as literally going on in front of you and this camera costing uh, people all of this money. And here I am. I lost $300 today because of Tropical Storm Debbie. And 
I am reading a story about all, all, all of this, that, that just every one of us, that, that, that every one of us citizens, and they're particularly talking about, you, you know, young people uh, over their lifetimes, as shit like this uh, gets more and more common is, is uh, climate change and everything else uh, as the collapse just moves into high gear the way that, that it, it, it's going to impact every one of us, us you know uh, until we're all living like uh, Mashu Piro Indians uh, in, in the Amazon rainforest uh, until that day, what collapse is going to look like it is every year uh, we're going to be spending more and more money while we're going to be losing more and more uh, money to lost wages. We're going to be spending more and more money uh, on, on goddamn insurance and, uh, and, and, and all of this stuff. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to pay, uh, next week, uh, I'm getting ready to pay $988 for flood insurance. It was $600 when I got this policy three years ago. This year, it's $1,000. Uh, so anyway, this is the tax, uh, they're, they're talking uh, about uh, in this long uh, article uh, using a Tropical Storm Debbie. Uh, as a perfect example. But, don't worry. And yet, remarkably, and Thankfully, all of them, 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 is not yet lost with aggressive action. Yes, aggressive action to end our addiction to fossil fuels and rethink and strengthen public infrastructure and conservation actions that will cost only a tiny percentage of what we stand to lose if we fail to act. The crisis can be made significantly less dire. And uh, this, uh, they're, they're, so they're talking about this new study, uh, the, the, in, in this long article, determine that if the world moves rapidly, moves rapidly toward a quote, low emission scenario in which CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere peak around the year 2080, 2080 and decline after that, the future looks much brighter. Yes. The trick here is that people will have to pay somewhat higher taxes of the traditional kind to cover the cost of the public investments necessary to affect such a rapid transition. Yes, 60 years, a rapid transition, but the effective savings per person will be truly massive. The report says we can pair the overall lifetime losses, you know, from climate change and all this shit per person down to $200,000. Wait a minute, where were they saying it was? Uh, okay. The, the, the report, okay. The report found uh, that if humanity does not act swiftly to limit it, climate change will cost a typical child born in 2024 at least uh, or around $500,000 over the course of their lifetime and possibly as much as $1 million 
through a combination of cost of living increases and reduced earnings. Uh, but the report says we can pair that overall lifetime loss per person down to $200,000 with a concomitant tax increase of about $5,200 per person. Yes, it is in short the old pay me now or pay me much more later scenario on steroids and one can only have a, one can only have one can only have a, it is a truth that our elected leaders and political candidates spend a lot of time seriously contemplating this week as they watch Debbie pummel the East and prepare to issue their inevitable pleas for assistance and declarations of emergency. There you go. Does life imitate art or what? Okay. And we're going to go from there to the biggest apocalyptimus on the mainstream media. Uh, the, these clowns called the cool down, which I have mentioned before. And they're talking in here about sea level rise. Sea level rise is on the verge of wreaking havoc on the U.S. coast. And then they break all of this down and take a, and dive in to uh, how sea level rise is going to kill us all. But don't worry. This is the cool down. Cool down, you doomers. So, what is being done about sea level rise? Yes, okay. Governments and corporations are moving toward clean, renewable sources of energy, such as wind and solar. But the green transition has been slow. The warming of the earth has already exceeded blah blah blah. The most impactful, the most impactful things you, we're talking to you, can do today, right, right now. This is what you can do living in, I don't know, Iowa. You're living in a trailer in Iowa and you want to stop sea level rise. Here is what anybody living in a trailer in Iowa can do right now to stop sea level rise in its tracks. You can take local action. Yes, in Iowa. You can talk to your family and friends who don't want to hear it. And do not forget, you can always vote for politicians who will protect the environment. But small steps add up. You can switch to an electric vehicle to stop sea level rise. You can shop at second-hand stores to stop sea level rise. And of course, do not forget cutting back on plastic to stop sea level rise on this planet. All right, and we're going to wind up with this excellent long story. I might come back and do a, uh, a full rant on this. It really is a lot of fun. Uh, from good old Truth Dig, those lefties over at Truth Dig. I I've read a couple of pieces by e Emil Torres a couple of times before. And this is Emil Torres's latest uh, article, Go West, Weird Man. Go West, Weird Man. The oddballs of the MAGA movement have nothing on Silicon Valley transhumanists. 
And uh, so what there, what uh, Emil does here is talk about some of the these crazy ass transhumanist. Uh, but I want to talk about this fellow I've heard. Uh, I've heard about and mentioned before named Nick Bostrom. This, this, this is just one paragraph. I might come back. This is a, a really funny article. Uh, I like Emile's style. So, you know, these transhumanists like Bostrom don't think... Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to go up. We're going to back up. Why does it matter whether we go extinct or not? You know, it, it, it talks about, a lot of this is talking about uh, artificial intelligence and particularly artificial general intelligence, AGI, killing every human being on the planet. And Emil asked the question, why does it matter whether we go extinct or not? Well, I would answer his question, but I need to move on. The obvious answer is that going extinct would likely cause enormous amounts of human suffering. If some obnicidal psychopath were to synthesize a designer pathogen and release it around the world, 8 billion people could die extremely painful deaths. Transhumanists like Bostrom don't think this is the worst part of human extinction. For them, the worst part of human extinction would be all the, quote, lost value that could have otherwise existed in the future. Millions, billions, and trillions of years from now. On this account, which is very popular within the movement, our ultimate aim should be to not only remake, remake ourselves, you know, biological humans, into, quote, post-human beings, but to colonize as much of the accessible universe as possible. Once we, you know, biological humans, uh, have spread to other solar systems and other galaxies, Nick Bostrom argues that we should build literally, quote, planet-sized computers, uh-huh, on which to run huge virtual reality worlds full of trillions and trillions of, quote, digital people. The loss of these people is the real cost of human extinction, you know, according to the transhumanists like Nick Bostrom, an idea that could be summarized as won't someone think of all the digital unborn? Yes. Uh, anyway, this goes on and on and on uh, 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 about these goddamn uh, ain't gonna happen transhumanist. Uh, but right now, I'm a lot more concerned whether uh, bugs in a jar going underwater if, if that's going to happen or not. So uh, I need to wrap up today's Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup rant uh, and uh, hope my, uh, my economic losses to Hurricane Debbie or whatever they call this thing are going to be only $300 Get out there and uh, enjoy your version of uh, climate catastrophe while you still can. Bye, guys.